In our previous capital budgeting examples, we went ahead and calculated the payback period, internal rate of return, and net present value for our sample two projects. And these are the results that we came up with. Now what we want to do is look at the projects and say if they're independent projects, what should we do? If they're mutually exclusive projects, what should we do? Remember, independent projects means we can take project A or we can take project B or we can take projects A and B or we can take neither of the projects. Taking project A does not influence our decision on whether or not to take project B. In this example, our critical acceptance level was 2.75 years and the rule for payback period is if the payback period is less than this critical acceptance level we should accept the project. So project A is an acceptable project. Project B according to payback period is not acceptable. Our next decision rule is internal rate of return and with internal rate of return if the internal rate of return is greater than the required return 12% in this case we should accept the project. Project A is acceptable. Project B is also acceptable. Last decision rule is net present value and the rule is if the net present value is greater than zero we should accept the project. Project A is acceptable. Project B is acceptable. So according to payback period we should take project A reject B. According to internal rate of return we should take both. According to net present value we should take both. If they're independent in this example what we want to do is take both. And that's because whenever there's a discrepancy between the two or between the three rules net present value is our best rule. In this case both projects have a net present value greater than zero we should accept the projects. Payback period is probably the worst of our three decision rules. It's not a very reliable model. It might be good during periods where the firm faces severe financial distress, but under normal situations, payback period is the least effective of our three models. Net present value is the best. So if there's a conflict in the rankings, we want to pay attention to net present value. And in this case, we're gonna take both projects. If the projects are mutually exclusive, what that means is now we can take project A or project B or neither. However, we can't take both. If we take project A, then B is off the table. If we take project B, A is off the table. At first glance, it might look like Project A is a better project because it meets all three of the requirements. Project B only meets two. But again, net present value is our tiebreaker. In this case, Project B has a much higher net present value. So if we can only take one, we want to take Project B because it has the highest positive net present value. One way to think about this is our primary objective is to maximize firm value. Project B adds about twice as much to our overall value as Project A. If you take Project A, that means you can't take Project B. You're taking 56,000, throwing away 114,000. If you can only take one, we'd much rather take the one worth 114,000. Why does net present value show project B the best result? How come it doesn't have as good of an internal rate of return? Well, internal rate of return has two problems, the size problem and reinvestment rate problem. The size problem says that internal rate of return, because it focuses solely on rates of return and not value added, can sometimes underweight, small pro or underweight large projects and make small projects look better. The example I always give is, would you rather earn a 100% rate of return on a $1 investment or would you rather earn an 80% rate of return on a $100,000 investment? Well, if you earn a 100% rate of return on your $1 investment, you've doubled your money. 
congratulations, take your dollar and go buy a McDouble from McDonald's. On the other hand, if you earn an 80% rate of return on $100,000, you made an $80,000 profit in that first year. Now you can buy quite a few McDoubles, are more likely spend it on a lot better things. Earning a little bit lower rate of return on a much larger investment is a better deal. Net present value captures that, internal rate of return does it. The other problem is called the reinvestment rate problem. And the reinvestment rate problem is a little complex. I'm not going to get into the entire details in this video, but the idea is the reinvestment rate problem tends to penalize backloaded projects. We can see in project B, most of the cash flows come in at the end. When we have a reinvestment rate problem, front loaded projects are typically going to come up higher rated than back loaded projects. It's a mathematical problem related to an internal rate of return assumption and instead net present value is a better tool. So project B has a little bit lower internal rate of return even though it's a better project because project B is a bigger project, it's back loaded, both the size problem and reinvestment rate problem associated with internal rate of return are working against project B. We want to ignore those if they're mutually exclusive, take the one with the highest net present value, that's project B.